Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast for those looking to optimize their long-term health and weight goals and understand how their body really works. I am your host, I am Shemaine Linney, I'm a fitness and nutrition expert, certified iridologist and biohacker and I'm very happy to have you back with me for another little piece of your day. Welcome to June. I'm so glad to see June, although I hate to wish time away, but I'm ready for a real spring and summer. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of the cold weather, so bring it, as they say. So this week's episode is a very hot topic. Like, not just now, always. Throughout my whole career, I've always came across people that have some sort of iron issue or iron deficiency or anemia. So that's what we're going to look at this week. Before I go on, I must remind you that the information in these podcast episodes is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please consult your health practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. Okay, so iron and anemia, iron deficiencies. So let's look. Anemia occurs when you have a decreased level of hemoglobin in your red blood cells. So hemoglobin is the protein in your red blood cells that's responsible for carrying oxygen to your tissues and to your cells. If you don't get oxygen into the tissues and the cells, then you are going to struggle with energy production and lots of other functions in the body. So you can see when we come across people that believe they've an iron deficiency or they have anemia, fatigue is the first thing that we generally see, like their mitochondria are not producing energy properly. So iron deficiency anemia is the most common type of anemia. It occurs when your body doesn't have enough iron, enough bioavailable iron that it can use. Um, Like I mentioned, you need iron to make hemoglobin and to carry oxygen throughout the body. When there isn't enough iron in your blood, the body doesn't function properly. And that's not just the energy. It's a lot of stuff that we're going to look at. So um, the condition is quite common. Many people don't even know they have an iron deficiency. But based on the way we live nowadays and eating and lifestyle practices, I'd say it's a high percentage of the population does have some sort of iron deficiency. Um, And you can experience symptoms for years before even getting diagnosed with it. But again, we're going to look at those symptoms and causes and everything as we go on. So in a woman of childbearing age, a common cause of iron deficiency anemia is a loss of iron in the blood due to heavy menstruation or menstruation issues or even pregnancy. And this is really common. Nearly every second woman I speak to, they have some sort of issue around menstruation. Um, and then we have nutritional factors, poor diet, intestinal issues, gastric issues, um, the ability of the body to absorb iron, um, impairments of iron absorption. So there's a lot. So what are the symptoms of iron deficiency? Well, like I mentioned, we have that fatigue that a lot of people will, that will be the first thing they'll look at. Um, Other symptoms are going to be, well, we have depression and anxiety, we've got low immunity, we've got gut issues, we've got lethargy along with that fatigue, we can see dark circles under the eyes or what some people would call bags, hair loss, pale gray 
pale, pasty, gray skin. This is something I talk to my clients a lot about. It's usually one of the first biomarkers that we start to see change around that three-week mark when I start working with someone. So pale gray, pale gray, pasty skin pretty much is a sign to me that you're not, your cells are not producing energy. They're not fired up. They're not creating heat. When you have healthy cells and mitochondria that create a lot of energy, if you think of those mitochondria like li little nuclear power plants, when they're fired up and working properly, they create a lot of energy and heat and warmth. And this then is reflected through the skin and the skin looks like full of life, it glows, it's warm, it looks healthy, it looks full of vitality because the mitochondria are working properly. And yeah, there's an aspect to nutrition there, but the iron plays a big part because you need to get the oxygen in there as well. So when you see someone and you're like, oh man, they don't look well, like they look sick, they've got that pale gray skin, that usually is because their mitochondria are not working. Their cells are exhausted. They're just not creating energy. So other symptoms would be cravings for ice or red meat or carrots. Your body's really, really smart. It knows what it wants and needs. Um, we can see behavioral issues in kids. We can also see, and I did an episode on what your nails can tell you. I think it was last summer. Go check it out if you want to know more. But we can see your nails. They'll start to change. They'll start to become spoon-shaped or curl upwards. That sounds crazy. That sounds like something you'd see on a villain of a Disney movie. Um, but it totally can happen to people when their iron deficiency becomes really severe. So one thing I think would stand out to me when I consider my clients is um, that anxiety and depression. That can be driven by an iron deficiency. We also will see shortness of breath, dizziness, um, a tingling or a crawling feeling in your feet and your legs, kind of like there's something under your skin crawling around. You can get tongue swelling or soreness. You can get cold hands and feet and that goes back to that metabolism and the slowing down of the mitochondria. You may also see a uh, fast or a regular heartbeat. Some people may be palpitations and that's because the synergistic effects of iron and magnesium are so tightly intertwined. And then um, you might see some headaches as well appearing as the body is struggling basically because deficiencies are not just going to affect one area they're going to affect you overall. It's like a ripple effect. It'll start with one deficiency, which will ripple throughout the body and have lots of issues. So what are the causes of iron deficiency and anemia in regards to the iron? So there's many reasons that a person might become deficient in iron. So I'm just going to give you a list, keep it short and sweet. Um, so... Obviously, well, not obviously, but um, a low consumption of animal products or specifically red meat or muscle meat, that can affect iron. Um, then you can have inflammation will inhibit iron absorption. Too low or too high zinc will affect iron in the body because... Um, Zinc at high doses can reduce the absorption of iron, and we see this in many studies. There's a study, Iron and Zinc Homeostasis and Interactions, that you can look up on PubMed if you want to know a little bit more than that. But it's because iron and zinc, they target the same protein site, and zinc can block up those receptors or affect that protein site faster than the iron can. So you have to be careful there. There needs to be a balance which is what I'm always, always saying. Always have a balance. It's not so much about moderation as it is about balance. Then copper. Copper deficiencies. You need copper to store iron and convert it into hemoglobin. Copper, copper, copper. People forget about copper. It's like the forgotten child. You also need vitamin 
A. Vitamin A is needed to help the body use iron more effectively. The presence of vitamin A in one study increased iron absorption up to twofold. So if you want to look up that study, it's titled on PubMed, Vitamin A and Beta Carotene Can Improve Non-Heme Iron Absorption. But then there's also another one that says, uh, it's titled The Influence of Vitamin A Supplementation on Iron Status. Simultaneous use of iron and vitamin A supplements seem to be more effective to prevent iron deficiency anemia than the use of these micronutrients alone. Now, I don't specifically supplement with vitamin A for my iron. My iron is pretty good. I use vitamin A to support my immunity. Um, so either way, you're going to get benefits from adding vitamin A into your diet. And it doesn't have to be supplement because I know people get sick of supplements. I do get that. Um, but sometimes... If you're not working with a nutrition practitioner, chances are people are going to be low in certain areas, and that's just how it is. So there, in that I also mentioned in one of those studies, beta carotene can help improve non-heme iron absorption. So beta carotene is a pigment found in plants that gives them the red color, or their orangey color. So think of um, sweet potato, Carrots, red pepper, orange pepper, anything that's red or orange, they're going to be rich in beta carotene. So we also have what else can impair or affect iron in the body? Calcium supplements too can play a part in iron deficiencies. Uh, proton pump inhibitors, non steroidal anti inflammatories. Low stomach acid, gastric issues, people don't even think of this at all. I'm not going to say they skip over it. They don't even think of it. So when you have stomach or gastric issues, then you're going to basically not be breaking down the food properly so that you can assimilate the iron and the nutrients. And then you can also not be utilizing the nutrients properly either. You may be losing nutrients because of leaky gut. You may also be losing nutrients because you have maybe IBD and you're experiencing lots of diarrhea. So you're definitely going to flush out a lot of minerals there and nutrients. You may also then not have high enough stomach acid or a good digestive uh, acid and enzyme profile that, again, you're not actually breaking down the food. You're not assimilating what you need to assimilate. Um, so that's a big one. And many people have gastric issues now. I see it all the time. It's rare that you'll get someone that has nothing wrong with their gut at all. Like that isn't that's the normal now is gut issues is the normal so it seems so uh, like I mentioned low consumption of red meat especially muscle meat taking iron supplements with meals a lot of people will do this but actually we don't want to do that because of potential interactions it's recommended to take your iron supplements an hour before or two hours after food Stress or chronically elevated cortisol will deplete minerals very, very fast and affect your absorption of minerals, and that includes iron. I, I'm just going to say this. Iron is mineral, in case you forget about it, because when we think of minerals, I think most people are thinking of sodium, calcium, potassium, magnesium. Iron is mineral. Um, and then depression, anxiety, and serotonin issues. So you need serotonin to basically have stable mental health and feel good. Um, there's also certain types of bacteria that will rob you of iron. Um, so you want to look out for any sort of SIBO or reoccurring infections that you might have and address them as well. Um, the answer is not always to go pump yourself full of iron. You want to look at all these other things too, like how is my gut? How is my stomach acid? Am I getting these constant infections? Do I have bacteria issues? How is my stress? So there's a lot there. Um, but if you're consistent, uh, 
with the healing aspect of your body, especially like leaky gut, it can take a couple of years to fix in some people. But if you're consistent, then you can see improvement. You can see the benefits of it. So um, also in regards to what can affect or cause iron deficiency or anemia, we have... Uh, I mentioned menstrual issues, so you do have endometriosis there. Endometriosis is where you have very heavy blood loss during your menstrual cycle, not just your period, because some women will experience spotting as well. So they will lose a lot of blood there. We used to think this wouldn't affect iron levels because the uterus builds up its own tissue to shed, but it does actually affect um, our iron levels in our body. And then you also have internal bleeding. If there's some sort of internal bleeding there from maybe a stomach ulcer or polyps in the colon or intestines or even colon cancer, um, along with the regular use of pain relievers, like I mentioned, these can all affect um, internal bleeding, which would cause you to lose iron. And then lastly, there are some genetic considerations like celiac disease that can make it difficult to absorb iron um, and that can be passed down to families. There's also other genetic conditions or mutations or polymorphisms that can add to the problem. One of these is TM or PSS6 mutation and this mutation causes your body to make too much hepcidin. Hepcidin is a hormone that can block your intestines from absorbing absorbing iron. Um, then other conditions that may contribute might be von Willebrand's disease or haemophilia. Okay, so um, what are the risk factors with having low iron? What, what's, what's the problem there? Well, we've looked at the symptoms. We've looked at some of the causes. Um, before we go on to the risk factors, I want to just, because I mentioned earlier about beta carotene helps with the absorption of non-heme iron and vitamin A helps with the absorption of non-heme iron. So what's the difference between heme and non-heme iron? Well, um, so iron comes in two forms, heme iron and non-heme iron. Heme iron is more bioavailable and efficiently absorbed and utilized in the body than non-heme iron. So your heme iron is found in your red and dark meats and your muscle meats and your liver and stuff like that. So non-heme iron is found in plants and iron salts and non-heme iron requires vitamin C to be present to help with that absorption but also the vitamin A that I mentioned above and the beta carotene. Now the good thing is when you get foods like sweet potato that are rich in vitamin C and beta carotene they usually have some vitamin A in them as well. So you can totally google like foods rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, beta carotene. You're going to see there are a lot of these foods I've mentioned already um, with Peppers, red peppers, uh, even prunes, but we'll we'll go into that more in a minute. A list of foods. Um, so iron is involved in forming cytochromes, which are involved in cellular energy. That's where that oxygen comes in. Iron's involved in forming hemoglobin, like I mentioned. Um, which is also very important for maintaining a strong immune system. Iron is needed for the formation of red blood cells and vessels. Um, iron is important for making up hundreds of proteins and enzymes in the body. And they, of course, are very important for helping stuff work. So if you don't have enough iron, these proteins and enzymes are not going to be efficiently made. And then you don't have stuff working properly. That's where we start to see those symptoms. And then iron is very important for supporting healthy, strong muscles. So if we get iron from muscle meat, 
the iron obviously has an affinity to our muscles. So that's really important. If you want to be strong, you want to be an athlete, you want to perform well, you want to have good endurance, good muscle mass, you need to make sure you're getting that iron in there. You really, really do. So um, the risk factors of iron deficiency anemia. So some people may be at greater risk for anemia than others. So um, women of childbearing age, so that whole menstrual cycle potential for excessive bleeding and endometriosis. Pregnant women, people with poor diets, which is actually, unfortunately, a high percentage of the population nowadays. Um, people who donate blood frequently then infants and children that are either experiencing growth spurts or maybe were born prematurely, they can be at risk too. Um, vegetarians and vegans who don't replace meat with another iron-rich food and also those synergistic vitamins to help them work. Um, teenagers can have a greater need for iron in periods of rapid growth, but also um, young girls who have just kind of entered their whole menstrual cycle, they can have sporadic and heavy bleeding. So we want to be cognizant of that too. Adults over the age of 65, people exposed to lead in their environment or through their water, and then high performance and endurance athletes um, like Spartans, like um marathon runners like triathlon runners like anyone that's trying to perform at a high level they they would be at higher risk of anemia deficiency though so that's where nutrition comes in though those type of people should already be very aware of their nutrition and their needs um so how can we test for iron? That's always a question. That's always. So the first thing I look at when I'm looking at testing, and one of the main ones that doctors will do, is going to be your serum ferritin levels. So your serotonin ferritin is going to test the amount of ferritin in your blood. Um, ferritin is a protein that helps with iron storage in your body. Low levels of ferritin will indicate low iron storage. So that's usually the first one, and I see that a lot when I'm looking at pathology tests. Then a complete blood count, so you'll see that on your labs as CBC. Most doctors will always do that, regardless if they're looking at iron or not, because they're looking at those red blood cells and the white blood cells. They might be looking at immunity. They might be looking at inflammation. Um, then you can look at hemoglobin or hemocrit, and then you can look at platelets. So a complete blood count that CBC provides information about your blood that can be helpful in diagnosing the iron deficiency because you're looking at everything I mentioned. You're looking at the hemoglobin, you're looking at the size of your red bloods, you're looking at the amount of white blood cells you have, you can look at the hemocrit level which is the percent of blood volume made up by red blood cells and we have all different ranges for these. Um, you can also then, if your doctor wanted to go a step further, they might want to do additional blood tests to determine how severe your anemia is, and that will then help determine what the correct approach or treatment would be. Um, so they might look at the not only the size of your red blood cells, but also the color. Because if the red blood cells are pale, they're not a strong, warm, red color, that can indicate that there's a deficiency in iron. And then they could look at total iron binding capacity. That would show up as TIBC on your um, pathology test. So a TIBC test is used to reflect the amount of transferritin that's carrying iron. So transferritin is a protein that helps to transport iron too. Not many people know this, because I know it can be a pain to get your doctor to test stuff and get requisitions, and some doctors will do this, and some doctors won't. But you can actually... Um, do at home testing for iron, and this is handy as, as a 
I don't know, technology and biology and everything advances, we can do a lot more stuff at home, which is comforting. So there is um, a website called Let's Get Checked. Uh, strangely enough, they offer these tests to the United States, Ireland, which is miles away from the United States, my home country, and the United Kingdom. They don't have Canada, for my Canadian listeners, listed on their website, but most of us here in Canada know that if you order from a United States website, it will come to Canada. And it's not too expensive, in my opinion. It's 99 uh, US dollars, so convert that to Canadian. It's not too expensive. That is an option. Um, but there, there, you have lots of options. Like some doctors are really good at requisitions and stuff. Then you also, before I move on, you also do want to look for that internal bleeding and um, gastrointestinal bleeding, stomach issues, colonoscopy, menstrual site, all that other stuff. So that kind of would be considered a test because you're looking at all of those. Um, so we've looked at the symptoms. There can be constant complications from those symptoms they can be made worse like any sort of a rapid or irregular heartbeat is a concern because it could lead to heart failure or enlarged heart or other cardiovascular issues if there's there may be uh, pregnancy complications in cases of severe iron deficiency um, with kids we may see delayed growth in kids um, but how do we start to address our iron deficiency okay so the first thing I always go to is food, always food. And usually when I'm with a client, I've already started looking at the likes of sleep, stress, inflammation, and their gut issues or any gastric issues. Um, so when we're looking at food, we're looking at our red and dark meats, muscle meats, and that includes fish and oysters, but we're trying to get our fish wild caught if we can. Alaskan salmon is awesome. Alaskan caught wild shrimp or prawns or whatever you want to call them, they're awesome. We've got our organ meats, so thinking of liver as well. Not everyone likes the taste of liver, so you can actually get a desiccated liver supplement, which can also be very beneficial for the metabolism and the thyroid. You can get black pudding. Black pudding is an Irish and British thing. Um, and that's basically rounds of animal blood and it'll have some herbs and spices in it. And it sounds gross, but it's actually delicious. And you just fry that up on the pan a little. Um, and then you, you eat it. You can add it to breakfast. So in Ireland, that would be like an Irish breakfast. You'd have black pudding, white pudding. We'd have eggs, bacon or rashers, as we call them. We have some fried mushrooms, some toast. Um, my mom used to add tomatoes, fried tomatoes. So like that would be an Irish breakfast. But even now in Canada, you can get black pudding here. My teenager eats a lot of black pudding for his breakfast. Um, then you've got beans and legumes, but you want to be cognizant of anti-nutrients there, lectins, inflammatory issues. You want to soak your beans and legumes. You want to pre-wash them, uh, pressure cook or slow cook them. Then you have your dark leafy greens, but you want to make sure that you're digesting them properly. So that's going to be your non-heme iron. Um, and you're going to need vitamin C. Of course, dark leafy greens are very rich in vitamin C. But again, digestion is key here. If you don't digest greens very well, then you want to work on that. Uh, and that would also include seaweed too. Uh, we have peppers. Green peppers also can be great. I know I already mentioned red and orange peppers for those beta carotenes, but green peppers can be great for iron too. Prune juice is a good one. Raisins, seeds, and olives can be great as well. And then if we're looking at... Also, most nuts are going to have some iron in them. I'm not going to direct you towards dried fruits or iron fortified cereals, but 
for some people, they may go to them. But if you're my follower or my client, don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, and then um, you can get a supplement. You can get a ferritin supplement. Uh, they can be hard on the gut. You'll need extra hydration. You may need some extra magnesium to help your body move that iron through your body. Uh, make sure you're not getting constipated. In severe cases, a red blood cell transfusion or an intravenous iron can help replace iron and blood loss quickly, but that's not a permanent thing either. So we really want to be what's permanent is food you're going to need to eat for the rest of your life. That's permanent. You don't even really need to think about it on some level. Like, on some level, I know my clients are like, I think about my meals all the time. But you have to eat for the rest of your life. You don't really want to be getting transfusions for the rest of your life. You don't really want to be on supplements for the rest of your life. Some maybe, but not iron, because it can cause some discomfort as well around those bowel movements. So foods, your meats, your pork, beef, liver if you like it, squash, seeds, greens, peppers, uh, seafood, eggs as well. I forgot to mention eggs. Eggs do have some iron in them. Um, and then foods that are going to complement the iron your carrots, sweet potato, tomatoes, a red, if you can tolerate them, if your gut can tolerate them, papaya, strawberries, mangoes, oranges. Now I'm just listing foods, so I'm going to stop with that. So the takeaway here is that uh, there's many things that can cause an iron deficiency or anemia. Usually we'll look at nutrition first uh, and then start to look at everything else. Um, uh, if you suspect you have an iron deficiency, go get it checked out. Um, they should be able to do a requisition pretty fast, or you can look at that website again that I mentioned. Let's get checked. It is what it's called. Let me just be sure here. That's what it's called. Yeah, let's get checked and they ship to the United States, which is potentially Canada, and they will ship to Ireland and England as well. So get yourself checked and then you can take action. Like you have literally all of the information in here right now. Um, if you think you have too much iron, you might look at constipation can be a real indicator of too much iron. So if you think you have too much iron or you're noticing any liver issues, um, raised liver enzymes or anything, you get your doctor to check your iron there as well to make sure you don't have too much iron. But this really, this episode, if I am going to say so myself, it's got everything you need now to start addressing any iron deficiencies or anemia that you think you may have. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'm always happy to answer everybody. You can send me a message through my website, that's shemainsmodelhealth.com. There's a contact me button there. You can reach me on Facebook or Instagram. And even people will comment under podcasts, um, like on SoundCloud, I'll get comments or even YouTube people will leave comments and I'm always happy to answer. So otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day, a great week, get lots of sunshine, get lots of good food and I'll chat to you guys real soon. As always, if there's anyone you feel would benefit from this information, please do share with them. Sharing is caring and really I say it all the time, we should be taking responsibility for our health now. And if you haven't subscribed to my podcasts or liked them, please do. I really appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye everyone.